Hello all, and welcome to our, our webinar on our application processes. For those of you who are new to Digital Square, we work with innovators, governments, and donors to support digital health ecosystems by supporting adaptable and droppable tools that are designed to work together seamlessly. One of the ways we do that is through our funding cycles. So to tell us all about that today, we have Ryan, who is a project administrator on Digital Square's operations team. He supports grant processes that we'll review today and the op and is the operations contact for some of the sub awards under our Global Goods team, where he provides financial and compliance assistance to our partners and overall operations management. So over to you, Ryan. Thanks, Ramunda. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining in today. Um, I may know some of you from, as Ramunda mentioned, working on sub awards together. I may not. Um, I'm sure we might have a, a diverse group here of people who may have worked with Digital Square before, applied for funding through Digital Square, or you may be new to this, this, this space and this community. Um, and what this presentation will do is really guide you through kind of what our, our three main grant application processes are like, how to apply, um, and kind of where you can post your applications. So if we can go to the next slide, Maria. And actually one more slide. There we go. So what is Digital Square? Um, digital Square was founded with the idea that we've seen that the world is still full of uh, digital health investments that are redundant, that lack integration between healthcare data sets, um, and are resulting in some wasted dollars and unsustainable projects. So we have set ourselves up to three main uh, work areas. We have alignment and co-investment, our global goods, and our regional and country systems. Um, the focus of this is that we coordinate investments into smart, scalable technology solutions, creating an environment in which these technologies can be sustained. We also focus on strengthening digital health governance and advocacy at the global, regional, and country levels, along with aligning stakeholders on all sides of the digital health sector. And then lastly, through our work in co-investment, global goods and digital market readiness, Digital Square supports the digital, digital health marketplace from all sides. Um, so those are our three main work areas, and now this is where we're going to get into discussing how you can start to work with us. Um, next slide, please. So this is our uh, full agreement process. It begins in this procurement process, um, which is kind of what, part of what we'll be going over today. Um, that's where application, we will release notices or RFAs requesting for applications, identifying funding. Applicants will submit applications. Um, and we'll go through a selection process. From there, we move into a pre-sub award phase where if you've been selected uh, as an applicant, we'll move into pre-sub award, get everything set together for our sub award together. And then we move into the, kind of the, what is hopefully the longest portion of this process, the implementation and management process of the actual agreement. Um, and then once that's all completed, we move into closeout. Um, but today we're really focusing on this procurement process. Procurement really encompasses anything from grants to contracts, um, but today we're really focusing on grants um, as that is the main way the Digital Square kind of provides funding in, in sub, sub awards. Next slide. And so we do this through three main uh, processes. Some of these, uh, if you've worked with us before, some of these processes may be familiar to you, but we've actually also revised some of these recently. Um, we also have a new process. So the first, and I think most common kind of process organization-wide and for a lot of nonprofits is the request for applications. And these are publicly released uh, requests. They require technical and cost applications to be submitted completely privately to PATH, usually via email. Um, and then our technical evaluation committee will review those applications and decide on a, work with our investor to decide on a selected applicant. Then we have our open application process. Um, this is, I think, kind of Digital Square signature process that we've kind of created and modified over the years. Um, and it focuses on a publicly released application and then a technical application that is actually submitted publicly, which we'll go over later. Cost applications are, of course, submitted privately, so you're not publicly you know, submitting all of your budgets and everything to the whole community. Um, and then we have this potential for our peer review committee to review the applications, depending on how the, the, what kind of process we've selected. Uh, the peer review committee is as it sounds, a committee of your peers um, in this digital health space who have volunteered to join and review applications throughout this process and to make recommendations as well. Um, and our newest process is this open request for applications. We'll get into it a bit more in detail later, but it is essentially a hybrid of the RFA process and the OAP process, um, where 
Second Lab applications are submitted publicly, but we are not going through quite as many steps as the open application process. So it's a, it's a bit of a hybrid. Next slide. Yes, and if you have questions, we're gonna have time for questions at the end. So please put them in the chat and we'll get to them at the end. Um, starting with, this is our RFA process. And these are kind of the steps we go through. So during solicitation and the preparation phase, this is an internal phase in Digital Square where we're identifying needs and funds from funders and where these funds are gonna to go towards. And that's kind of an internal process. Um, you probably won't, you won't see anything until we hit the solicitation phase and the application phase. And that's where Digital Square will release the request for applications onto its website under its, the solicitations page on its website. And from there, reading that RFA document, you'll get all your applications instructions, deadlines, um, what the cost, usually what a cost estimate would be on there, um, what the themes are and, and kind of the target areas from there. And so that's, you also be given a time for, for Q&A of some form. We either would do it, get, you'd be able to email us the questions and we would send them all out at the end of a process. Or sometimes we also do live uh, Q&A webinars as well. It, it kind of depends, but it will be specified um, in the document as it comes out. Now, once the applications are submitted, they'll be usually emailed to our team. Um, then our evaluation committee would begin to work. So our evaluation committee is always made up of an odd number of people. Um, at least one person from our technical team at Digital Square and one person from the ops team. That allows us to really have a diverse perspective and professional you know, expertise looking at these applications. Our uh, and funder may also like to be part of the evaluation committee. It's, it's not required, but they're welcome to join if they would like. Um, and once that committee is formed, we will begin scoring and evaluating the applications, commenting on them and things like that. Um, the team will then meet to kind of review each person's individual score and discuss some key, you know, key points about each application. Um, and then they pass it off to the funder. And at this point, it's really the funder's decision to decide which applicants they want to select, which funding levels they want to give. Um, but they may also ask our, our team, the Digital Square, for, for some guidance and some advice. Again, purely optional, but up to the funder. And once the funder has made their decision, um, our Digital Square board will be notified and we'll begin the, the award process, the pre-award process. Um, you might notice there's not timestamps for how long each of these steps will take. It, it really does, just depends on RFA to RFA, um, what the process is like. Now moving on to our, our next process here. Um, so next slide, Maria. Our open application process um, does have kind of more guidelines on, on timeline for steps and we kind of are aiming to stick to what is now a 12 week process. Um, it originally was uh, a bit longer, um, but over the past few months, we've been working internally to revise it, to shorten it down into some places we can so that we can really make it as efficient, as fluid as possible. Um, so for those of you that are new to what this process is, it is a um, competitive process that it features transparent submissions using our open application platform, which we'll get into later. Um, it's open, it invites comments and discussions between the community and with the goal of really having collaboration between groups and people to create stronger applications, create uh, coalitions and teams submitting applications together instead of just kind of silos of everyone working on their application on its own. Um, we follow three main phases here, the concept note phase, which lasts about four, you will have about four weeks to submit your final concept notes. Um, there will be some time for visual score review. Then we move into the full application phase, um, which is about another two weeks. And then the review and investment phase is about another four weeks or so, um, ideally depending on, depending on the timeline and time of year we're in. So in total about a 12 week process um, from start to finish. Next slide. And so looking at this a little bit more detailed, uh, similar to the RFA process, we have our preparation phase where we're doing all the, the background work internally to identify the funding and uh, how many awards we'll be giving out, what the size of the award, sub awards will be and things like that. And then we'll be releasing the notice um, again through our Digital Square website. Um, and you'll be able to find it from our solicitation page and read there. And so here's where it gets a little, a little unique is that we, we started out with a, a four week concept note phase. I think this, previously had been broken out into multiple distinct phases. 
And what we've done now is really create just a fluid four week phase where applicants will be able to post their concept note onto our open application process anytime within the first four weeks. And once that initial concept note is posted, uh, that concept note becomes open to review from anyone in the community that's accessing the platform. People will be able to comment on applications, make suggestions, comments, and things like that. Um, and so we really advise you to, to take advantage of that collaboration time um, and post your initial concept notes early into this process so that you have time for others to review, to give feedback and things like that. So you're really maximizing this opportunity you have there. Um, after the four weeks are up, we move into our review phase, which is about two weeks. Um, our team will review each, each concept note, a digital square team reviews them, and will determine those that are in scope, those that are not, and those that align with the digital square's vision, and, and those that don't. And for the ones that don't align to the vision or to the scope of the RFA, uh, those will be eliminated, and then the rest, uh, rest of the applicants will be notified that each of their concept notes are, are in scope. And those people will move on to our next phase, which is the full application phase. Um, this is about a two week phase. So what we would encourage you to do is as we're doing, going through our review that you're continuing to think about your application and to, to develop it in the hopes that, and the goal that you are moving on to the full application phase. And so during this phase, uh, you'll be submitting a more robust technical application. You'll be submitting a full budget. Um, the budget won't be submitted publicly, but the technical application will be and it'll be open for comments and review, just like the concept note phase. Um, applicants can also request uh, interim review during this time. And that is done by our digital square team. Each application can get one review by our team. Um, so again, highly encourage you to take advantage of that opportunity, but you can also request reviews from your fellow community members throughout the whole time. You can get as many of those reviews as you'd like. So definitely encourage you to do that. Um, so once your application is submitted, move to the next slide. We come into what we have essentially two tracks here. Um, the top track is where we essentially where the funder has decided that they would like to maintain the decision making process um, of who to fund. And so in those cases, we have a two week review by our evaluation committee, which has the same setup and makeup as the evaluation committee review evaluation committee um, in the RFA process. Then Digital Square team will compile the, the reviews and pass them off to our funder. Um, and the funder will have the opportunity to review the applications. Again, they may ask the Digital Square team for input, but it's optional. Um, and then they will notify, the funder will notify the board as, as to who they're selecting for funding. And then we begin the pre-award phase. Now, the second kind of bottom stream here is what some of you may be more familiar with. Um, and this is where the funder has elected to pass off the decision-making to our institutional uh, review committee. And that is a subset of the Digital Square Board and, the, and they will be given the opportunity to decide on, on which applicants to fund at what levels um, and things like that. So that begins with our peer review committee review, um, which as I mentioned is a, is a committee made up of your peers who have signed agreements to undertake this work, um, all voluntary of course. And they will be scoring applications for about two weeks. Um, and then the Digital Square team will take those applications uh, or those the applications as well as the scoring from the PRC team, review them themselves and make recommendations on to the IRC, which is the next step. And then the IRC would take those recommendations from the PRC, from the Digital Square team and most likely review the applications themselves and make a funding decision there on which applicants to fund. Next slide. And so now we move on to our, our newest phase, our newest process, um, the open application pro or open request for applications, ORFA for short. Um, and so really the only difference here is this is the exact same process as the RFA. The only difference here is that in the solicitation phase, instead of emailing us your applications, the applications are posted publicly to the open application form, similar to what you would do for the OAP process. Um, but unlike the OAP process, there is a no concept note phase and, and uh, multiple levels are reviewed by the PATH team. And it's just the full application being submitted to the open application platform. Um, and this is really, uh, uh, Digital Square is always finding, trying to find new ways to be, continue to be transparent, to invite more collaboration in the community. And this is one way we're seeing that we could do that, we would do that in the future, um, is, is having this option for a more public 
kind of RFA process than, than the more standard traditional one that we've, we've been doing up to this point. Next slide. So now we've covered our, our three main solicitation processes. You've heard me mention a few times this open application platform. You may be wondering what it is. Um, you may have used it before in previous applications, depends on who you are and what your experience is with us. Um, but the open application platform is something we use for our OAP process and the ORFA process. It allows you to submit concept notes and full applications publicly. Um, again, giving you the opportunity to find collaborators, receive community feedback, and provide your own feedback as well to other applicants um, and people in the community. One note here is that you will need to create a account. Um, this is to prevent spam and from bots getting into the comment section and the application site and everything. So you will need to create an account. Um, it, there's an easy button on the homepage to do that. It's straightforward there, but just a quick note so that you're not day of trying to post something and you, you're not able to get it on there. Um, and again, we're not submitting any detailed public, uh, any detailed budget or financial information publicly. That's going to go directly to our Digital Square team. Um, so I would understand if there was concerns there, but we would not be doing that. Uh, next slide, please. And so this is what our, our homepage will look like on the platform. You can access this platform. We will, we have a link. Um, right there at the bottom of the page, but also you can access it through the Digital Square website and the solicitations page, there's a link there. And so this is our homepage. Um, at the top, you'll see there's a button for login and sign up, and that's where you can create your account. And then on this main kind of blue highlighted section, this is where you can select any current or former um, notices or RFAs that we're running. Um, I realize I think I forgot to mention this, but a notice is a type of open application process that we do. It's usually that second stream I talked about. Um, and it's a larger call for applications where we'll be uh, usually posting something along the more thematic lines, asking for multiple applicants. And we usually would typically award um, multiple sub awards for one, one uh, open application process under the notice. And I think it's something we typically run maybe once a year is, uh, is usually our goal. Um, now back to the, the platform itself, um, you can, in that drop down menu, you can see a picture uh, screen in the screenshot, you can drop down and go in and take a look at previous notices and RFAs, you can look at previous applications, they're all still public, you can see all the comments, so if you want to get an idea for, for what this process looks like in action, definitely encourage you to go to the website and, and take a look at kind of how it's panned out in the past. Um, and then also, in, from this page, you can click in and look at any live RFAs or OFP processes that we have on the platform as well. Next slide. Um, so again, the main goal of the OFP is transparency and collaboration. Looking at transparency, you'll see here, these are applications that people have submitted or groups have submitted. You're able to read their concept notes, access the public files that are there, um, their technical applications, their concept notes, they're all there for review for anyone to see that has an account. Um, and we're also collaborative. So next slide, please. Collaboration is our number two. This is what our comment section would look like. You have the ability to see an application, hit the comment button and give your feedback and really start a dialogue between you and the, the submitters to you know, run through some ideas, some plans you might have, some suggestions you might have for the approach or different ways to format things and frame things and, and things like that. So this is really getting that dialogue going in the comment section. Um, and even if you're not applying, it's something we encourage you to do to, to really grow the community and grow kind of the strength of everyone's applications. Next slide. Um, so commenting, you can, this is kind of what the, the comment page would look like. You also have the ability to follow applications. You can, so you'll get alerts as it moves into different phases and you get alerts when new files are uploaded, new comments are created so you can stay up to date on the, the, you know, the dialogue going on around it. Um, and then of course your comment section, kind of similar to most comment sections you would find on a website. We have text formatting and you're able to post um, your comments there. Next slide. Um, and so functionality, this is what um, your application, fit, your application uh, page would look like if you were submitting an, a concept note um, in this example. And so you click apply, there's a button on the, 
once you click into the notice or the, the RF, open RFA link, there will be an, a button there for you to apply. Uh, and you'll be able to add all of your, your information in. We have marked which, which things are required, which are not. So that kind of guides you through the process. Um, you will select which thing you, which um, dissertation you're responding to. Sometimes when we do notices, we'll release multiple kind of streams um, along that notice. So there'll be different themes to apply to in each notice, um, typically. So you'll select which one you're applying to. Um, and then you'll type through what we're looking at here is an executive summary. It's a short uh, two to three paragraph summary of what your proposal is. Um, and then you can upload your files as well. And you can choose to lock the files to certain uh, viewers. So this is how we all prevent budgets from being viewed by the community as a whole, but it allows you to submit your concept notes publicly instead. Next slide. Right, questions, I think that's it. Um, before we move on to questions, one thing I would also say is we have a YouTube video about six minutes long that was created a year or two ago that walks through the open application platform. Um, I encourage you to definitely watch that. We'll send out the link uh, afterwards. I know this presentation is gonna be posted to our wiki page and I'm sure we'll include that link there, but definitely recommend you, you watch that video. It's gonna walk through much better than I can with screenshots in a presentation. Um, some of the information, some of the, the pages they're walking through might look a little different because it is a few years old, but core concept, most functionality is 99% is the same. So definitely encourage you to check that out. Um, and I think that that's all I have. Verinda, do we have any questions to start with? No questions yet. Okay. But definitely opening up is, any, are there any questions in the room? Feel free to raise your hand or type it in the chat and I'm happy to read it out loud. Looks like we have one we have a question. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yes, applicants, applications can come from any country um around the world in africa in asia in the united states in south america wherever you are we are open to applications from anywhere um as for an application coming from an individual student i don't know if we've had that um that done before we need to be part of a, an organization as carl just posted there um but if you're applying through a university that is i think an option you would have if it was with the official university or organization. Yeah. Perfect. And then we have one more question in the chat, and then Amir, I'm going to come to you with your hand raised. Um, but Ryan, did you speak about the amounts of funding typically available or ranges? Um, I don't think we, we, I don't think that's what a rule I want to put out there. It really varies based on how much funding we've been able to identify and what the funder has been asking, is asking for as far as size of applications. Um, so I don't think we have a typical amount we put out. Um, it can really vary between the, the RFA to the OIP to the open RFA. It's, it all depends on how much funding we have available. So uh, I don't think there's a typical amount I would want to put down there as a rule. Perfect. Amira, do you want to go ahead and ask your question? Uh, thanks. I just wanted to ask in relation to the account creation, is it also associated to an organization account and then individuals linked to that? Um, so is you can create a, a, your own account. individual account and that's actually a good reminder I meant to mention. We definitely, we encourage you to always use the same account when uploading new pieces of your application and commenting. Um, that's because as, as you just ask the question, it, the, the account is linked to you as an individual and you may be submitting on behalf of your organization. Um, we don't want is three people from your organization submitting the same application. You know, when one person is submitting the concept note with their account and then another person is submitting the full application with their account. So try to keep it all um, into one account and that kind of makes it easier to, to streamline it. Um, another question is, is a fully open source solution still part of the requirements? 
Uh, yes, I believe so. And actually, I might pass this one to, to Carl Furry, our, our technical director of global goods. He can definitely answer that one a little better than me. Thanks, Ryan. So for the various notices, it the donors often do see at the requirements uh, for more the RFAs, but our open application processes focus on the solutions that want to apply that are either existing global goods or aligned to what we've defined as a global good. And these are three key areas that we see global goods, uh, what software, content, and service. Uh, but the fundamental to your question there is an open, an open source software tool is uh, one of the requirements of being a global good. Uh, or if you're a service, then you need to have a global access policy. The key to look at is there shouldn't be a barrier to access. The definitions of a global good can be found on our wiki, which the team will post in the chat. Thanks, Carl. All right. um, next up, what are the expectations at the end of the project, especially when the product of the, res of the research is commercially viable? Who owns the IP? Uh, great question. I'm going to punt to Carl again on this. Great. I'm, I'm going to take the next two in a row then, if that's good. So, Shola, thank you for the question on that side. Uh, so the focus here is that the contributions and the investments from the notice will be to further the global good, to align them to work that's being required. Uh, so we expect that that technology is already licensed and all the service is available under an acceptable global access approach. Uh, so therefore, we, we as PATH don't retain the IP. It is written in a way that it needs to be published under an approved open source license uh, or as, as approved within the particular type of content that you see. So a good example is uh, if you're considering adding to an open source EMR like OpenMRS, we'd expect uh, any of that content to be under an existing open license or if you're adding a module uh, to see that come to light under one of the open source licenses that align with that. If you're extending something like the open HIE architecture, which is more of a Creative Commons uh, documentation framework, we'd expect it to come under that particular approach. Uh, so great questions, we can take it from there. Uh, the other side is just in terms of the funding, no, it's not limited to not-for-profits, um, uh, but SMEs are encouraged to apply. Uh, in fact, we, we encourage across the board to apply, and we also are very excited to be actively encouraging applications from LMIC countries uh, in this up and coming phase. Thanks, Ryan, back to you. Thanks, Carl. Um, and just a, a quick note, we have our, you may or may not be familiar with our wiki page. Um, it has a lot of information about Digital Square as a whole and also our processes. So this presentation we went over will be posted there. Um, and there's also a wiki page we'll send a link to as well that line uh, that spells out each process that I went over today, the various steps, and it goes into a little more detail actually on each um, requirement and how to submit an application and what will be contained within a concept node or a full application and things like that. So definitely encourage you to, to look at those resources that are there for you. Perfect. All right. Next, next up, we have uh, what stage of development of the innovations are considered? Uh, most early stage and mature validated solutions seeking funding to scale via public or private as well. Thanks, Bogic. So looking at this one particularly here, uh, we're not funding innovation in the notice calls in terms of de novo builds or something that is uh, coming out. This isn't aligned to the grand challenges type of awards right now. Uh, each notice does have criteria in it. You can look historically how they've been framed and what, what one's been looking at. Uh, but by the definition of global goods, you are looking at something that is at scale proven to be useful in multiple settings, um, convening and looking at health data itself. Uh, so to your question there, it would be mo more towards the mature side, uh, validated solutions. Um, and also this funding does not support implementation. Uh, it is really looking at technical advancement of the tools. Uh, and so that feature features are unlocked that could be leveraged in future implementations. Uh, so that's what the up and coming notice call is looking at supporting. It doesn't say that Digital Square does not support uh, implementation funding in other streams, but for our particular OAP that's up and coming, uh, that'll be some of the focus areas. Uh, sorry, the solicitations. Thanks, Carl. Okay. 
right? If we have had closed software, but want to pivot and become a digital public good, are we eligible to apply and receive funding in order to open source? Back at you, Carl. Sarah, that's a great question. Um, my answer is gonna be yes. You could, you could apply to that. Uh, and this is a, looking again at what the call for the notice is. So going back into the, sorry, the previous solicitations that we've run, uh, the last one we ran was a real focus on what we deem shelf readiness, uh, which is looking at how do we take technologies from just being uh, software, but that's available to really something that's more product focused and able to be easily implemented uh, for countries. And, but before that, we also had a notice that what we issued looking at aligning to the patient level monitoring standard set that came out of the IHE white paper itself. So each time we, re we release one of these, there are thematic areas that, that we are seeking uh, inputs on. Uh, so yeah, uh, blind, a call that you're applying to, if it suits the idea of taking your technology open, or you could uh, make an argument around that way, or if part of aligning your technology to a particular standard set, part of the activities would be making it open, you're welcome to apply, uh, you're welcome to put that in. Um, and again, a pattern that we encourage, and this is uh, for all, uh, applications that come in is to segment and create work packages that are well founded and are, are cleanly severable if needed uh, so that we can understand where work is happening in the applications. We have had on occasion a few times where parts of an application uh, that we have been submitted to us have been funded uh, when others have not. Um, the, the have nots may have been uh, something that was focused predominantly on implementation or some technical work that was a bit, yeah, a bit out of scope, but the other aspects of the proposal uh, were deemed merited and we had the opportunity to facilitate investment into those. Perfect, thanks, Carl. Any other questions out there? Okay, in that case, if there are no more questions, um, we can probably wrap up a bit early. What I will say is that, oh, go for it, Brian. Uh, this is our, our list of contacts that we have. Um, some of you chatted with us now, Brenda and Carl and I, but this is our other uh, technical and operations team. At, at Digital Square. This is specifically our, our global goods team. Perfect. And so if you guys have any questions, please do feel free to reach out to us at any time. Um, and Sarah, I know you did not miss it. We have not announced the dates for the applications yet. So they are coming up in early November. So please keep an eye out um, on our website, our social media. We'll be announcing it um, as widely as possible. So we look forward to receiving your applications. Um, and yeah, if there are no more questions, I will just say, please join us for the next, um, the next uh, webinar on fire next week. We look forward to seeing you there.